What's up, everybody? Welcome to The Draw episode. Technically, this is number five, but we kind of messed up on number four because I'm an idiot and uh, didn't record their audio, Mr. Crash and Mr. Filthy. But we'll get it going here today. We've got everything set up and going right. Uh, I am Flagrant Triggers, and before we get started, I have to tell you guys that uh, the MCU is a big stinking pile of flaming garbage that we want to get rid of, so what we want to do is make Marvel mail again. That's right, ladies and gentlemen at FlagrantTriggers.com, X-Ray Girl and Gary Buechler of Neurotics have created one of the best shirts that I've had the privilege of printing yet. Uh... Obviously, this harkens to the fact that the MCU and the female empowerment thing has just kind of ruined the culture of our comics, entertainment, movies, and we want our culture back. So this is a pre-order. You can get it at flagranttriggers.com. The cutoff date for this will be December 31st, so you've got about two weeks to get this ordered. Once all the orders are in, it'll be done. It's a limited run. And... We'll be sending them out after that. This is going to be all processed, packaged, labeled, shipped, and everything by me this time. So instead of going through an automated process, I'll be making your labels. I'll be sending everything out. So head on over, get your shirt, rock it, piss all the right people off, and let's get into the show. Today, of course, as always, I am joined by Mr. Filthy and Mr. Oh, Crash. There. <laughs> so uh yeah yeah let's get into it guys how's the week been going oh it's been pretty good i'm definitely looking forward to you having more boxes behind you for these orders that you're going to be sending out in the near future uh it's going to be really cool it, it, it will be the most manly boxes to have ever existed and that's for sure uh do you have a pink version of the shirt um no but I am going to do a Good. couple of custom shirts for a certain special people. Like uh, I'm going to do one for Chrissy and um, mm. may get one for a couple of the other people. But as, as of right I mean, now, we don't just... need that non-man color. Just saying. That's true. But there are women who also are like, hey, let's make this. Let's let's get some dudes back in this universe. <laughs> <laughs> true, uh, true. But yeah, I'm good. I guess. Crash, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. I am, well, mildly hung hungover. <laughs> I'm out visiting friends in the Midwest. And there was a party last night. Uh, it was up till about 4 a.m. Nice. Yeah, I didn't get home till like 3 a.m. last night. So wait, a Filipino I've... hungover after partying and drinking? No way. Yeah, I know. We are, we're known for just being able to handle the alcohol and be fine the next day, but no, we do get. <laughs> so alcohol and spice that's what they can handle <laughs> is it true about the yellow flash like i i saw i've seen crowder he's got a token now and he's uh he's half asian and like he can drink like a drink and he will immediately flush like crazy uh <laughs> I think that's, that's more so like uh, Chinese and like the uh, whiter skinned Asians mm. the, with like the fairer skin. Because my ex, she if she had one drink, like her face was red. All of her friends, same thing. Like we'd go out to Korean barbecue and stuff. And they, you know, of course, there's drinks there or even when we do like karaoke and stuff. And like, yeah, they're all Chinese and every single one of them put one drink in them. And the face was just like beat red. It was hilarious. I'm just in there like, why are you all blushing for, huh? You all <laughs> like me? Like, yeah. I, dude, I had no yeah, idea. Yeah, I don't, I don't get that way. I don't, I don't uh, get blush from drinking. Oh, you know what? <laughs> I, I, I've got some, uh, one thing. But, Crash, I just noticed your shirt. Oh, yeah. Where, yeah. where, did, where did you get that? That, that looks pretty awesome. Uh, there's this new company out there who's... Uh, not censoring the messages we want to put on shirts. Uh, what's his name? Uh, oh, yeah. Flagrant Triggers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what's funny is uh, the company that I usually use for the shirts, they actually gave me pushback on this because of the uh, the logo. 
And I've talked to these people before because they gave me some pushback on uh, the Dabbler t-shirt because of the Johnny Walker logo. And I told them, like, look, it's parody. Like, we're not selling shirts to promote a, uh, like, for the, the Dabbler thing, it wasn't to promote liquor. It wasn't to promote Johnny Walker. We didn't make any sales off of drinks or anything else after that. Literally a parody, which is covered by fair use. And they gave me pushback on this, so I gave them the big middle finger and I took it somewhere else. So and I'm like, eh, if you want to miss out on the sales, it's fine. So uh, I, I honestly, I think this is this is going to be one of the bigger bigger shirts too. So it should be fun. It's going to be super busy, but I yeah. Anyway, yes, excellent shirt. <laughs> Thank you. It's good to be busy like that, though, right? Yeah, it definitely gives me a uh, keeps me busy. That's for sure. Um, hmm. Not that you know, planning Christmas and stuff for kids isn't keeping busy enough. Which actually, I need. Yeah, to... but that's that's familiarly busy. You know, like yeah. a lot of people wish they were busy with good work to do. You know. I mean, imagine a person getting up, going to McDonald's, how, how do they feel good about their busyness? And probably not so much, right? You know, uh, so many different jobs, whereas like you get something that you're actually doing something good with, which is great. And hopefully people make you as busy as humanly possible over the next bit of this month, you know, because yeah. then they're supporting something like, you know, uh, freedom, liberty, you know. Well, the... It... It's going to, yeah, like you said, it, it's a good kind of busy, like, because ironically, one of my first jobs was actually in fast food. And I absolutely hated that job because it, the thing I didn't like about it was how it would be super dead one minute and then incredibly busy the next. And you just had to sh switch, switch, switch the whole time. And I couldn't stand it. Like, I, I'm more of a, I like to know what I'm, what I'm going to get done so I can make a plan and I can get everything executed and take care of everything. And then, you know, small stuff comes up then you know, deal with it then. But mm -hmm. not only that, but having to work for a company that just doesn't really give a crap and makes garbage food. No. Well, you know, I find it interesting. It's like, there's so many more people in the last maybe four years or so that have been forced to have to like work on their own. And are starting to discover the difference between working for someone and working on your own. And, you know, there are also people, I mean, because, you know, technically when you're creating shirts for other people, you are working for other people technically. But it, it's in a way of working together and not, and not for necessarily. And I, I think over the last, you know, you know, whatever years, uh, a lot of people are realizing yet again the need for like the freedom of business and, you know, maybe libertarian views uh, like lesser regulation, the ability to be able to stand on your own two feet and have a business in your garage if you wanted to out of your bedroom. Like, you know, be able to figure out your way, do what you want to do, create what you want to create and bring more options to the, the the world of business you know the more options you have the more business you have the more jobs you create by by making it free you know so it's it's very interesting how this has all been happening due to you know uh censorship mm. which if you really think about it censorship is just a cousin to regulation they are really one and the yeah. same regulations telling you here's the rules you have to abide by to be able to do what you want to do and it's like yeah i just want to make shirts like, why do we need a regulation on shirts? What are you regulating with a freaking shirt? You know? So it's like, you, now you, you replace where regulation with censorship. It's like, what are you censoring with a shirt? Like, how you, what is a shirt going to do to someone? You know? Uh, shirts don't kill people. People kill people. You know what I'm saying? And then, now let's expand that. Guns. Guns don't kill people. People kill people. So it's like, all these things in a way, our cousins to each other and so intertwined, it's so fascinating that's like, now you see a shirt like a Make Marvel uh, Mail Again shirt. It's like, this isn't a bad thing, but it would absolutely be censored if it was to be put on like the, the main shirt makers websites. So it's like really like oh, yeah. the regulation over the decades and decades and decades, because that took a very long time. Like regulation just didn't come up overnight. I mean, that's just been a slow lurch to just like thumbing down freedom of business and the free market capitalism, you know, but the censorship is so much more recent and how quickly that censorship is bringing back the ideals of free market capitalism. Because when you take away everything from people, they're going to have to now 
crawl their way up. Like, I mean, like you say, the amount of work you're probably going to have to do with this limited run, is it's going to be a lot, you know, and you've got like a family, you got everything you're doing, but it's that same time. It, that's where that good feeling of work comes from, because it's like, it's on your own two feet. You know, it, it's something you're creating, not for a, some boss or anything. It's like, it's so much more fulfilling. And so, it, and it's fulfilling because it's free. You know, you're free to do what you want without the censorship, a.k.a. regulation, you know, <laughs> like, mm. it's so fascinating to me. I'm sorry I get long-winded on it, but I, I think it's really fascinating, and I think uh, it's really good, and it's a good thing to support. You know, people go to Hot Topic and they buy a shirt. I mean, this is a Hot Topic uh, thing, and it's probably made in uh, the Philippines by people who can uh, drink and, you know eat spicy food uh and those people are probably very young and you know <laughs> they have no other choice really and it's like what are you really supporting whereas like with now this new influx of like freedom and liberty it's it's a beautiful thing it really is people should buy it just saying not not spawn i'm just saying well that and it's it's not just the fact that there's work for me for something i want to do it's work that i choose to put on myself it's yeah. not like I'm being for like I don't I'm not being forced to do something I don't want to do like this is something I want to do and mm -hmm. the mess well like you said like big bigger brands or bigger distributors they're not gonna they're not gonna run the shirt just like I was holding this up like the whole reason I got into this is because Chris, this shirt of Chrissy's got pulled off of uh, Teespring or Tee Public and mm -hmm. it's it's not hurting anyone. It's literally just a free speech message, but they're self-imposing to save a particular small niche group of people that might hurt their bottom line by a minuscule amount. When mm -hmm. I, I guarantee that if these companies said, you know what, free speech, people can put whatever they want on a shirt as long as it's not like copyright or trademark infringement. And it, it would blow up like they'd get so many independent creators that would start making their shirts through those companies, but they don't want to because they're afraid of offending a certain crowd. And it's, it's ridiculous. Like people will see this shirt, the make Marvel Milligan shirt, and they'll think it's actual violence or that they're being ostracized or put into a, a camp where their freedoms are being crushed by the oppressors and, it's I mean, ridiculous. really, just picture that. If you picture that, just like act it out. It's like someone's gonna see the room for Putin shirt and be like, oh! "It's like, what type of a human are you?" Yeah. Like, excuse me, you just saw a shirt, and we're like, oh! "Like, who are you? Stop!" Like, yeah. you need to have a sit down and have someone be like, "Look, it's a shirt." You know, like you are officially the equivalent of the people that used to be on Maury and they'd be like, I'm afraid of cotton. And then Maury comes out with the cotton person covered in cotton and the person runs away. It's like you are literally the equivalent of that. Like, it's a shirt. It's a like not even that. If you just even see it on the website, it's a picture on a website of a shirt. You know, it's like it's the most ludicrous thing in the world. Most. Yeah, it's like don't don't have companies control what you see control it yourself you can click off the website you can not buy mm -hmm. the product like it, oh god that reminds me of the story that chrissy told us about going to the gym and someone complaining to the gym owner or teacher or whatever or trainer about who she was it's like these people get all butthurt and then they go complain to the higher up so that they can feel like they've exercised some form of, of authority over someone else and that's fascist no. And that's where they go wrong. Like, there is a route that these people could win. Like, they could absolutely win. It's just they don't pick their battles. They just battle against everything. It doesn't matter what it is. It's like, especially when you talk about like someone like Chrissy, it, it, as creators, or even just as, as people like Chrissy and Frank, are really some of the, the kindest and warm and, like, welcoming people you'll ever meet. Like, in the, the, the span of my lifetime, just being able to interact with them, get to know them, it has just been, it's been, I, I don't, Surreal doesn't, like, cover it. It's just, it's so refreshing and so unique to everything I've ever created. I mean, I've worked in the music industry. I've worked in, I've, you know, I streamed on Twitch, somewhat on YouTube. Uh, 
And out of all the people I've met in all these fields of entertainment, they are very much about themselves and, and trying to work to build themselves up and become something of themselves and have no care of people around them, like at all. They'll drop you at, at the drop of a hat. They'll do the worst things to you. They'll try and ruin you behind your back. And it's like Chrissy and Frank, it's like it's like the people that this person's trying to choose to be like, I looked on their social media and blah, blah, they said X, Y, Z, and it's bad. It's like you don't even know these people. And there's going to be enough people that are going to be like, all right, well, let me see for myself who this, who this person is and who are they going to see? Like... Oh, a comedian and, like, you know, her fiancé, just, like, cool people, caring people, magnanimous, like, they're trying to bring people together. Like, it's like when you can explain them without having to say, like, what would be manipulated by those trying to point out how bad people are, it's like they don't pick their battles. It's like this isn't the person you need to be going after. What are they doing to you? They're the equivalent of a shirt on a website. Like, what are you going after that for? You know? It's like people are crazy. I, I think uh, I think the brand name says it all. Triggers. They're triggered. It's really yeah. an emotional reaction. They, they I, I feel like to some degree, they, they can't help it at this point. It's been so entrained in their heads that when they see a message that uh, strikes them as wrong, it, it they're they're uh, literally in a kind of fight or flight mode emotionally. They feel like they have to fight against it. Or run away from it or something and, and it's a bit of a panic right and um yeah i'm not even i'm not sure what else i could say about it i just think that i, I mean that's why i really love your brand name flagrant triggers it's it's <laughs> a lot of the shirts you put out there are is very triggering to those uh to that particular group of people on a certain side of the political spectrum you know, it would be a funny kind of promo video for the site. Um, if you take clips of every time like a leftist uh, is seen reacting to something that triggers them, being like, oh, and then uh, you yeah. animate your shirts on <laughs> what they're looking at. So like they see someone walking by and the left is like, oh, I hate you wearing the shirt. And like you just like you don't even have to make it look well animated. Just put the shirt over the person's body as they're like walking or doing stuff, and just like constant like little short moments like, ah, ah, and just each like each person's a different shirt, you know. I was actually thinking about that earlier, um, right before I got in the shower. It's like for this shirt in particular, doing like a little promo video and like uh like having the doing all the mcu crap where all the like mm. captain marvel and stuff and then have like uh the, that song girls just want to have fun and then show how it slowly just decayed the whole industry and how they're losing money and no one's watching it and it's terrible audience reviews and then just like here comes the make marvel mail again shirt that just completely changes everything so mm -hmm. yeah, that that would be fun. I I would like to get something put up like that. So I'm I'm you, you to gotta add in week. you gotta add in the sound clip of John Sheena going like, "Well, I Bing Shiling." It's when he uh <laughs> said something bad against like a Chinese ice cream company, and like he got told like, "You better like change that." So he said in Chinese, "I love Bing Shiling ice cream." Like that's it, yeah, it would be so perfect. <laughs> no, it was a uh, it was his apology to her for admitting Taiwan is a country. No, that that was a separate one. The Wo I Bing oh, Chiling really? is yeah. He's had multiple times he's made, you know, <laughs> wow. China angry. Even though he's taught himself Chinese, which in and of itself is kinda like should be like, fair enough, man, you've done enough. Like you like <laughs> one of a crazy hard language. I mean, granted you don't have to make clicking sounds like you have to do with some African languages, but I mean one word in Chinese pronounced in four different ways are like very different words, like say is for and say is die so you can either ask for four or tell someone to die i'm pretty sure that's the pronunciation anyone in the chat let me know but like yeah it's like what a crazy language i'd like four of those ice creams sir uh you want to die those ice creams like what you know what the ice creams do to you yeah and the weird thing is chinese people like from my experience oh before anyone gets triggered oh uh, from my experience with the Chinese people, they do not, um, I don't want to say they don't have the capability, they just don't have, I guess, the desire to ever 
understand you mispronouncing something. So, like, if someone's speaking English uh, and, and they're from another country, they often have an accent and they will say words wrong or wrong grammar. But you, you as a listener, just you fill in the blanks and you figure you know what they're saying. You can figure it out. In Chinese, no. If you asked for, like, I want uh, four of that ice cream, but you actually said, I want death of that ice cream, they will not be able to understand that you meant four. They won't fill in the blank. You literally just told them, I want death of that ice cream. Like, it's so it was the strangest thing from my experience, like, mispronouncing things. Because as a New Yorker, I mean, I grew up with people who speak, you know, different languages as their first language. I mean, my high school in and of itself was 70% Ukrainian. They were kids from all the Ukrainians that fled in the 90s and came to the country. So most of my school was people from another country that spoke with an accent. You know, and then when I worked at Radio Shack, so many people with accents, and it's like, you just naturally, you just fill in the blanks. It doesn't matter how they say it, but in Chinese, uh-uh-uh, you didn't say it right. They will only interpret it if you want four, you want death of that ice cream. It's a, it's the strangest thing, you know, and then it's not surprising that their culture and their governance uh, methods are very, you know, centralized, strict, and, and, and not free with openness to, you know, diversity, equity, nor inclusion. You know, you're either Chinese or you're not. That's the inclusion. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was getting ready to, uh, I was thinking about that. Like, is that because, like, here, it's a melting pot. And you, we got cultures and races from all over, literally all over the world. And there's nuance, and we make a good effort to understand this nuance, where, like, in China, it's very ethnocentric. and No, no, it's not. You have the Mongolians. They speak uh, Mongolian. They don't speak Chinese, but they've been forced to speak Chinese. Even in their schools, the children aren't allowed to learn Mongolian as a language. Then you got the Uyghur Muslims. I mean, if you saw those people, you would not know that they were Chinese. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, China is a, a very large country. I mean, they have um, roving uh, kind of... Oh, like nomadic tribes that live in like the deserts and stuff that travel around just like you'd expect to see in the Middle East, but you're in China. You know, when you look at the, the channel ADV China, which is now I think called the China Show, uh, they travel around all of China. So like really you go to South China, you got people that look very different to North China. And really the, the main group of Chinese right now that are in power consider themselves the Han Chinese from the Han Dynasty. Uh, and they're, they're, you know, from my experience, very elitist. So when you meet a Chinese person actually outside of China, more often than not, they're not Han Chinese. They're like either uh, Fujianese um, speaking people, uh, usually uh, Southern people uh, from the south of China. And it, it's very fascinating. Yeah, it's, it is a very like when we think of melting pot, I mean, they have the same melting pot, but they they believe in Yi Jungo which is one China. So even yeah. when a Chinese person leaves China, they consider themselves Chinese. They won't say they're English or American. You know, their kids will probably say English or American, but the parents will not. Like the ones that come, you know, they, they will say China. They're Chinese. Well, wouldn't that lend more into being ethnocentrism if the CCP version of China is what they kind of push? Well, that's where the CCP pushes. The people themselves, you know, they'll say they're Chinese, but, you know, then you ask, where are you from? Like, oh, I'm from Guangdong. I'm from, you know, this area. I'm from Hebei. You know, like, they'll say where they are from in China, and they will, like, it's almost like they don't realize that they're saying they're different, but they'll often go into why their area is different from, like, the other area of China. You know, it's like, oh, I'm from the South. We believe in having more spices and more flavor. You know, it goes for like this form of health or something, you know, and then the Northeast. Well, no, the Northeast would be the spicy area because it's much colder there. And they believe it, it, it makes heat in your body, yeah. even though it technically doesn't really like heat up your body. I mean, if you eat warm food, it's warm, like, you know, but like they they will say their differences that way, but they don't realize they're saying like I'm different from the rest because it's almost like like a, a, almost like an NPC, like not to be insulting to the Chinese, to the Jungle people, Jungle Ren. Uh, well, I Bing Xingling just saying, uh, give me my social credit, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but really, like it, it's 
it's almost like an NPC insofar as they're just from children on. There is no other response to questions like, oh, what are you? I'm Chinese. Yeah. So there's no reality for them of I'm something different. And for them to see the outside world, everything coming in is going through a funnel of what, of what they can see. You know, it, it's only really been till since uh, uh, VPNs kind of really started coming about and becoming uh, able to be gotten that you know, a lot of Chinese, especially the younger ones, started to see what the outside world's doing. And then they recently, uh, they messed up by letting the Chinese people watch the World Cup because for some reason China loves soccer, even though they don't have a good team at all, but they love soccer, you know, so they're watching the World Cup and they're seeing like, oh, look at these other countries. No one's wearing masks. They're not having to take tests to get into the stadiums, the players. No one's got masks on at all. And they're looking around themselves at their reality and, and realizing. There's not just one reality. Like, just like there's Yi jung there's not one reality, you know? And look at that reality right there. How does that reality work when at home, just to even get into my apartment, I have to take a test and I have to scan a barcode? And it's like, it's insane. So they're starting to realize that what the reality they know of is not exactly uh, reality, but... I mean, you're talking about generations and generations. I mean, Mao Zedong, uh, after World War II, you know, what he put that country through is unbelievable. You know, I mean, you're talking about maybe estimated 100 million deaths. <laughs> like, this eclipses, yeah. this eclipses what happened during World War II and not to really, you know, sully down uh, World War II and, and what was done by the bad people at that time. It, but this was a, just a completely overlooked thing. There was no recourse, there was no knockback, nothing happened of it. Nothing. The person was able to stay in power for as long as they wanted, you know. And wasn't that, uh, he was the one who wanted all the pig iron, right? He he took all the tool, the farmer's tools and stuff and oh, yeah. started confiscating and then people just, literally just started to starve to death. Yeah, he caused a famine. Yeah. It was also, uh, well, one of the things that also caused a famine from what I've heard is that uh, Mao decided, uh, birds, I, I think it was because like birds, uh, c you know, carry disease. So he wanted all the birds to be killed. Yeah. You kill all the birds. They're not dropping seeds. They're not, you know, and they get, they don't eat the bugs and stuff. Like maybe it, he was just it, a conspiracy theorist and he thought that the birds were American drones. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe, but you know, it could also just be the, the, see the one downside with communism is that it has the highest percentage chance of corruptibility by the one in power. So when you centralize so much power, it's, it's the same problem with monarchies. There were some kings in history that were great kings and brought massive growth to their society and did great things. I mean, Rome didn't become Rome because bad leaders at all times were in power. No. You know, you don't create aqueducts and all these amazing things for your time under bad leadership. But, I mean, they had, a, you know, technically they had a Senate, but, you know, they did eventually have emperors, pretty much. And then, you know, surprisingly, guess what happens to Rome? It collapses, you know, and the power gets just absolutely demolished. But, you know, even when you look through England, you know, I mean... A lot of things built under that, and it wasn't all under the thumb of, like, oh, like, totalitarianism, you know? Some kings actually just wanted things to be okay, because, you know, it makes their life a lot easier when they don't have a whole bunch of people pissed at them. And some kings understood that. And maybe their power structure, all the people they had around them, weren't as corrupt or evil for sometimes. But... It has the highest, if you look through all of human history, you know, centralization has the highest chance for corruption because you're putting the chance of corruption into the fewest amount of people possible. That's why, like, the Masons and creating the ideals of liberty and, and what they created with the, the U.S., it's the first country in all of, like, human history that really decided in liberty and decentralization of power in uh negative power that's what they call it, where it's taking away power from the people in power because they are the chance of uh corruption so you don't want them to have power you want to have a decentralized system so the good can keep on you know flourishing so you know in a country like china it's like that's what i you know with mao that's what i think it really was and that's what you're seeing with xi 
you know, in, in China, you look through all their leaders, really. It's such a centralization, and not one of them are, are necessarily that good. They're, they've only really had, like, even when you go back further into Chinese history, it's it's been a warring country for, like, ever. Like, yeah. you know, the, the different uh, clans and leaders that they've had over the millennia have always been fighting each other, destroying each other. I mean, it's, in a way, it's what led up to even uh, Japan attacking them. You know, Japan was seeing that they were having a battle between uh, what Jiang Hai-shek and uh, Mao's communist people. And now Japan comes in because they're like, well, once one of them wins, they're going to come, they're coming for us next. And so let's hit them before they come for us, you know, <laughs> and that's really what happened. Japan was, you know, worried that worried they're going to be next. And they go in there and they I mean, Grant, they did horrible things. There's really no excuse for what Japan did during World War Two at all. Horrible things. Uh, but, you know, since then, I do think that they have done better <laughs> in humanity. But it, it's really it's all about that chance of corruption. That's what that's what communism is. That's what Mao was. It was just a chance of corruption. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think at a certain point too, it's it's unavoidable because I feel like a lot of corruption as far as political power and even even with corporations, businesses, stuff like that, it, I I feel like one of the starting points for that is nepotism. Because you give favoritism to friends, family, stuff like that, even though they might not be necessarily qualified for the position that you want to give them or the the easy in that you wouldn't afford to someone else in the same with the same abilities or education or whatever other metric you have mm -hmm. but maybe i mean i in modern age i don't know about the nepotism as much i'd say in the us yeah i think you're spot on within in the us uh, which is surprising because you would think of the U.S. being as decentralized, but then you think of, you know, Joe Biden and Hunter Biden. You think of uh, Hillary Clinton and, you know, shady things that's happened with her family. You know, even uh, Nancy Pelosi. Like, a lot of these people have children on boards of companies around the world, and it's like, why? You know? Mm. It, it's like, how is this guy on a board of an energy company, and he never even went to school for anything to do with engineering, at least? I mean, he's not like Crash, you know? Crash could possibly, you know, take care of an energy company. You know, I don't see them have, hooking them Appreciate up with... Appreciate the vote of confidence. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you definitely... It, it, the most fair thing I, mean, I could possibly I say... I most definitely could be do better a better than Hunter. Than Hunter. Exactly, 100%. see? <laughs> yeah, we're on the same page on that. I feel like I, any of us on this panel could do better than that idiot. I don't know. I mean, I th you know, a part of me, though, it has to say rich people have a knack. You know, it, you can't be dumb and do what they've and do what they've done. I don't know if I can. I really don't know if I had like the same family, but the same genetics of myself and I was the same person as myself, just warped into someone else's body and lifestyle. I, I truly doubt I'd be able to do what they've do what they've done. I. I don't agree with that because I think if you are given the opportunity to be placed in a position like that and you have unlimited resources to make something happen, you can make something happen. Like, you, you, and I don't huge... think I could get away with it as long as they have. Well, getting... I think I'd get caught on the first attempt. <laughs> like... Well, not because I, I, I don't think that's true either because the reason he should have been caught a long time ago. I mean, look at look at the laptop. Look at how much incriminating evidence there actually is against him doing very atrocious things. But it, yeah. it's not about it's not about what he's done. It's about who he knows and who his family is connected to. Yeah, yeah but you're, you're also nepotism in and of itself is a is a political strategy. It's it's that's true. It, it, uh, we've talked a bit about uh, Filthy's. Well, I mean, not today, but Filthy's prediction that. It's, uh, on the right, we're looking at perhaps a, an upcoming kind of Game of Thrones scenario. A lot of people are kind of vying for more power and influence, and they're starting to take shots at each other. We're, we're starting to witness there is people are starting to reveal where their loyalties lie. And some people are being forced to, to some 
except forced to make a choice between people that they may have considered friends because something that happened may or may not have. We don't know who's lying necessarily. You know, we just know what allegations are out there against some people. Uh, but yeah, it's been a thing. I, I the the Elijah Schaefer Christian Walker thing that happened. Uh, I was up late listening to that Twitter space, and it was a bit of a. I remember I, I messaged Fealty. I said, "Dude, <laughs> if you're up, <laughs> this is this is blowing up." And it's, I it's, listened to some of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I felt like uh, uh, a bit of an like it was. It's, it's like being a reality TV show addict. You know, that's what I felt like I was watching. Was it was a reality TV show, and people were. And not to not to downplay things that happened, you know, it, uh, assuming that the allegations against Elijah are true, then it's atrocious. Some of the things that he's done to some people, you know, sexual assault is not something you should take lightly. Yeah, uh, but oh, see, you're making but, the but, mistake there. If I just interject, uh, you remember but, with Amber Heard, with Me Too, with everything that happened. See, this is where the civil war is going to maybe possibly come in. I think you yeah. po pointed out perfectly there. What the, the main thing the right always said. If you if something happens to you with smexual whatever, go to the cops. You have to report it. You have to take legal action. This is what you need. You can't just go out there and say something happened without like an ounce of like proof. Yet what do we yeah, have? And that's, with that's why that's why I constantly thing? caveat that if it's true, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I honestly I don't have a uh, I don't have skin in that game. You know, I'm, I don't yeah. know any of the any of the people in that space I've not met personally. So. They're just personalities that I've followed because I've, I've liked a lot of their political takes or it, I mm -hmm. just enjoy watching their content in general. Um, but yeah, like, it, it, I mean, the thing that interested me more was uh, just, yeah, the interaction between what seemed to be forming factions, you know, is, is what I kind of witnessed. Was there were a couple people who got mad at a couple others. Uh, some people threatened to. I remember one woman. I don't really know her that. But, uh, I've never seen her content. I don't really know what she does. Uh, Lisa just kind of goes off and says, I, "Well, I have recorded conversations, and I'm gonna go make a video." I, I don't know if that's ever come out or not. I've not seen anything on that. But yeah, it, it's <laughs> you could consider it just like Game of Thrones or a reality TV show. People are are forming alliances. Uh, building loyalties with each other and are really just trying to, to, to some degree, it's also a bit about like career survival, right? You know, if if you got people out there that are gunning for you, they, whether it's true allegations or not, you know, it's, it's something you have to, uh, I, I imagine, be worried about when you have that many people, when you have so many hundreds of thousands of people following you. And some of those people are, are may have been breached to uh, over a million, on, at least on YouTube, or I'm not mm -hmm. sure. And it's also a question of like, you know, it, it's it's disconcerting to see things uh, that kind of prove me right in, mm. in my prediction. Like, I don't want it to come true. Like, I don't want to be like, oh, told you so. That's honestly the last thing. I want to be wrong on it. I want to be completely wrong. Like, oh, you're just being stupid on that. But like, yeah, it's like. You look at something like that, and it's like the only reason why this is happening is people vying for power to try and utilize this situation as a tool to either get more eyes and ears on themselves, just the same equivalence as what the left did with the Me Too and everything. You know, and that, 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 was, that was exactly my thought was that the right is basically embarking on its own kind of Me Too event. Yeah. No, it is. I mean, yeah. even... I mean, to be fair, uh, I know it's a hurtful thing to say to people, but I did call two people leftists yesterday. You know, <laughs> you guys probably saw it on that stream where, I, you know, some people were saying stuff to me in, in a nuanced way that I realized was a step too far for me. Uh, instead of being funny and like, you know, oh, here's a funny thing I'm saying. It was I'm judging you and. And try and tell you exactly how to change and be better. And uh, I called those people leftists because that is a leftist mind, you know, viewpoint. It's like someone tells you this is my lifestyle and you tell them, no, that's wrong. You should do it the right way. 
what you're doing is going to be bad. And I'm, you know, I'm going to tell you, you have to do this or else you're going to waste away. Literally, one of the course was you're going to waste away. And I mean, I don't dislike these people and I don't hold anything against them. I'm not even really mad at them. You know, it bothered me in the moment and I decided, OK, I'm just going to put my foot down and I'm going to push back on this. But it is a very leftist mindset. And right now in, in the non-left, you got to remember, there's a lot of former leftists that are in the non-left as well. And these people share viewpoints and mindsets, just like we were talking with the Chinese stuff, where they don't realize that they believe in one China, but they're also different. And when you really ask them about themselves, they will explain to you how they're different. But at the same time, when you can instantly, right after that, ask, like, oh, where are you from? It's one China again. You know, no matter what country they're in and, and everything like that. So right now on the non-left, you have leftist, centrist rights, crazy rights. Like, you know, like you have the, the canceled that are now coming back from the shadows back onto Twitter. You have all these different power groups coming together. And it's so unfortunate to, you know, have stuff like that happening because like you're right. You were completely right. There was Cassandra Fairbanks was in that call and she was definitely against mm -hmm. what they were saying. She was like, look, you know. Why are you saying this? Like, I don't agree with what you're doing right now. You don't have to, you don't have to go out here and, and say all this stuff online. Like, just, there's a route for you to take. Like, why are you doing this? She was asked. You know, and none of them had an answer for her. They pulled the leftist mindset of like, why are you talking against this? Like, almost the equivalent of believe all women. And I'm like, look, I'm not saying it didn't happen. And I'm not saying it, it, it did. But what I am saying is you didn't go to the cops, you didn't provide any proof, and you only have to sat around, you know, slandering the guy on every channel you can, every video you can lately, and now you, you're making a Twitter space, and at the end of the day, all of that only, you know, solves the purpose of, of suiting yourself. A and not trying to get justice for what happened, because w what's the goal? Same thing with Adam Kriegler, it's like, what's the goal of saying what you're saying, doing what you're doing? You're not trying to get justice. You're not trying to enact a, a like a way of being. You know, you're trying to just benefit yourself and vie for your power in this coming civil war. You know, I mean, is it going to be bloody with people fighting? Literally, maybe some some creators that want to take it that far, but I don't think it'll, it's going to be nuanced like this. It's going to be stuff like this that people aren't going to realize. Like you're doing the left's way of doing things. You know, and you're doing it to yourselves. The left isn't even having to do it to you anymore. You're censoring yourselves. You know, and clearly she handled things behind the, the scenes, the Sarah uh, lady. Uh, and Elijah was fired. He was let go from the company. What more do you need? If you don't want to take it to the cops, you don't want to take it to anywhere else. What more do you need? The guy got taken off of the channel. You know, it's like, and then they're going to try and convince it and be like, well, what he did was horrible. I, I don't know what he did. I'm, you know, it's like you could say what he did was horrible, but if you never prove it, I can't go with you or him. I can't go with either, which in a way makes it worse because now I can't go with either side. You know, because it has to be truth, justice, and the American way, right? Like Superman would say, hey, Henry Cavill's not in that position anymore. But, you know, not following that. And it's going to be bad. Like, I hate to go with my prediction again here, people, if you're watching. It's gonna be bad. People are going to destroy each other. And, I mean, just look at it now. Like, imagine what Elijah's going through. I mean, not to say, like, oh, don't think if the person who had something wrong happened to them. Because I can't say something wrong happened to them. When did they prove it? It's just words so far. You know? It's like, oh, he got let go from the company. Yeah, but people get let go from companies just because people make up stuff all the time. Johnny Depp got taken out of multi-billion dollar industry, uh, you know, the Pirates of the Caribbean, because some girl made up tons of story, you know? And when the truth came out about that, it showed, you just took this guy out of multi-billion dollar industry, he was going to make a whole budge ton of money for this company over a girl who's lied, has no proof, has made up everything. You have clear proof of pictures, videos of her the day after and sometimes the day of things that she had said happen with no proof whatsoever. And then on top of that, she took a grumpy in his bed and left it there. And then said, no, no, it was this tiny dog that's almost the size of the grumpy that's left in the bed. 
you know? So it's like, really, what's happening in the non-left? People better get ready. And people better really start trying to really understand what it what it means to be non-left. Like, because it's coming. I, yeah. I I th I think you're putting way too much weight on on this whole infighting thing because to me like the civil war a civil war type scenario on the non left would be the populist movement being dismantled from all ends by the the left and the right or established uniparty whatever you want to call it like the the Elijah Schaefer thing like I don't to me that's that's a civil war on the on the drama front like it's not a I, I don't see that shaping the future of of the of politics in america like yeah because and i've heard the rumors and stuff but to me to me it just seems more like a an entertainment fighting thing than it is because you're right like there are people who are absolutely cutthroat they will shit on people if they see an opportunity, they're going to jump at it. They don't care who they hurt. To me, I I don't know. I I can't take people like that seriously because I don't think people like that actually get to a position where they're influence Amer in influencing the general landscape of American politics. Like voices, yes. Like leading massive swaths of people, like like Trump and all the, all the MAGA people, all the populist people and all that, like, um, that, that's completely different than some influencers on YouTube who have a, a couple million followers. And it's like you said, we were talking about last time, even though I forgot to record the audio, like what percentage of people are actually being reached, you know, like, if it, I mean, I get it. It sucks that people shouldn't be that way. Like on a moral stand standpoint like if people do shitty stuff like call them out on it D don't do the let don't, don't go to the higher ups and then shit on shit on that person all over before you have the balls to actually go and talk to that person you know like have the conversation with that person first see if they can try to atone for what they've done don't do like the lady at the gym with Chrissy and try to get her, get someone in trouble and then just crap all over them before you even know half of what's going on. But I mean, yeah, I don't, agree with you. I, I, I don't I know. Like I, a point. I, I can't, I can't take, I, to me, that's more drama than it is actual, um, impactful on the, on the, our way of American life, you know? And maybe that's, that's the just only me. I disagree with that one. If I could put just a little pushback on that. Elijah Schaefer was a news reporter going around and actually filming the riots to the point where he actually got punched in the face and was featured on every single right wing news organization yeah. multiple times. He was an absolute part of the right wing movement and the political side of right wing uh beliefs i mean my mom knows who knows who he is mm. you know so it, it's i don't agree that he's just an influencer or or youtuber uh maybe he is more so now as an entertainer since he doesn't go out and about in public yet but you gotta remember we're not in the real political season yet uh sarah gonzalez is, is you know she's on the blaze a massive right-wing political entertainment sphere they're not, they're not, this isn't like Netflix. The whole goal of The Blaze is to be a non-left-wing entertainment space. This is very political. They may not be high up on the tree if you're looking at a chessboard, but I would say that they're certainly knights at least. Maybe bishops, you know? So yeah, they're not as powerful as a king or queen, but they're not pawns. That's for sure. And they're definitely up the tree somewhat. Well, I, I, I don't know, because to, to me, people like that, like, they'll replace them in, in a heartbeat. Like, it, it's just like the, mm -hmm. uh, it's just like the leftists, like, once someone goes against the narrative, they're, they're now excommunicated, they're shit all over, they're removed, and they lose everything. Like, to, so, for me, there's, there's a much bigger difference between someone like Elijah Schaefer versus Tim Pool. Like everyone might think, well, Tim, Tim's just a, a YouTube influencer, but 
Tim is actively building a serious effort to change the political landscape. He's building co a company or companies. He's trying to seriously influence culture and build a culture based on what he believes are the founding American principles of freedom, doing what you want, help it, and community. And no, he, he believes in communism. He calls, he <laughs> says it himself that with his company, he runs it in very communist style. Well, you didn't wait, see that what, coming, did you? When they, I mean, what do, what do you mean? He literally says he believes in communism when it comes down to smaller uh, forms of governance. So with his company, he's running it very communist style. People want to come into work, they can come into work. If they don't want to come in, they can take off as much time as they want. They have utter freedom. Like, it's like a very communist, everything is shared. There's, well, yeah, you know, but he, they don't he have... also, he had a point too, like, it, it, depending on the scale, it depends on what type of governance works, right? Yeah. Because yeah, he, but I mean, he's not he... just believing in American. Like, he's not just believing in, like, American, like, you know, and, and just freedom. He's a nuanced guy. But he, but he wouldn't restrict his employees' rights just to grow uh, his company. He will get NDAs. Is that I mean, not that, restricting their rights? Yeah, yeah, but that's every every major corporation too. Like, oh, but just because everyone jumps off a bridge, well, you should too. I mean, I look, I don't consider I don't consider it a restriction of rights if it's voluntary. You, yeah, you have the, I mean, they've the had to voluntarily sign for it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't know. I I don't agree with that necessarily when it comes down to the entertainment sphere. I think that no company should be able to restrict the voice of the people because that's a constitutional right is is your voice you know what the problem with that is we've let corporations become people exactly that i, I do not believe in that at all at all yeah. like a, a company should not be afforded the same rights as you or me you know like mm -hmm. I, I i find that i find the value between our, our individual lives much more important than the than the well-being of a corporation that exploits and uses people every day even yeah, if it, well, then again, corporations should be allowed to fail, but the American government doesn't let that happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. God, that that's a whole nother, oh my God. Like, it just you just started a cascade effect in my brain of, oh, well, the government's being compassionate to this person that happens to be a building. We can't, yeah. let, we can't let those building people fall, fall behind. No, no well, the way they'll say it is... Behind. No, but they'll say like, yeah, but this company employs a hundred thousand people. Good. Let let it fail. Let those hundred thousand people be really pissed off, and now mm. no company will ever make that mistake again. It's gonna suck for the short term, but it's gonna be a heck of a lot better for the long term. And look, I mean, I don't like doing anything that will take food off people's tables. I think that's one of the most horrible things you could do. Is you know, making it hard for someone to eat and have a roof over their head. But at the same time, when it comes down to companies, you can't just let them keep getting away with the most horrible things they could possibly do and, and choose directions to go with their companies that will destroy their companies and then say, it's okay, we'll bail you out, do it again, work towards that same mistake again. You know, it's like, that's worse because they're not going to do anything in the favor of that hundred thousand people that's working for them that you just tried to attemptively save. No, they're going to rook them even more and worse over time because there's no repercussions for anything they do. I mean, and then even if the people band together, you could find another hundred thousand people easily. It's like the people that even work there, they don't even realize, look, you're replaceable too. You're just as replaceable as that company should be replaceable. You know? <laughs> One of the things it's that ludicrous. made me nausea, I was listening to, to Jimmy Dore talking to the that railroad uh, union guy earlier. Hmm. And the fact that there hasn't been a minimum wage increase since 1980 is like in the grand scope of things, that's pretty fucking gross. Considering the amount of inflation caused by the government and the amount of money that is absolutely blown on stuff that doesn't benefit us at all. I, I'd say probably 95% of the budget that the U.S. spends is not for the benefit of the citizens. Well, I'm going to sound libertarian here really quick for you, Crash. Uh, I don't is believe in minimum... 
I don't believe in minimum wage at all. I think if someone wants to pay you a dollar per hour and you're willing to do it, you got to let it happen. You can't force a company to pay a minimum of anything. It's the worst thing. It's, it's, it's stupid. It doesn't work. You're not paying enough for that person to live. You know, what if the minimum wage is $8, but in New York it takes about $15 per hour to be able to afford your house and uh, your, your apartment or your food? It yeah. doesn't work. Yeah, I, I the minimum that. wage just passes, pass, is always passed on to the consumer. Remember, governments don't have yeah. any money that they, didn't take, that they didn't take from their citizens or print, and companies don't have any money that they didn't get from their customers. So it always gets passed on to the consumer. Minimum wage on, only uh, exaggerates inflation. It doesn't help. It also shrinks companies. It shrinks jobs. Because if that company is now being forced to pay $8 for something that should only cost maybe $4 an hour, you know, like if you're in, let's say, like, I don't know, Idaho or something, and the cost of living is really low there, and you have a job that's only maybe $4, uh, four hours a day that you need, and someone wants to just take a side job and take that four-hour job, but you can only pay, like, $4 an hour, but minimum wage is 8 now you've just ensured that that person can hire half the people, you know, and it's going to have to require them to do more of the work. See, I, I and would not be, pay. I would be open to it being based on state because you're right. Like living expenses are drastically different from state to state. But it's also different from town to town, like, you yeah. know, within that state. So there's no you can't centralize anything. You know, because who's going to be in charge? Like, maybe if you made the minimum wage be choosable at a very low level of governance, like, you know, the person who's actually involved with each town, you know, to figure out what is the actual fiduciary need of the people here and say, all right, this is what we're making the minimum here. But then, you know, what's going to happen if you're in a town where it's like really easy to it, it very cheap living scenario you're gonna go two towns over and get a job over there you to you know drive two hours away to your job back and forth because you know what maybe two towns over the cost of living is higher i mean so then the now. places exactly so and but it's on a larger scale because it's harder to find the really difference in in the pricings i mean in new york that's why people live in jersey and they they work in new york because if you work in New York, you're more likely to get paid more because they're going to be paying you on expectation of your living costs in New York. So you go and live in Jersey just over the bridge where it's much cheaper to live, much more crime ridden and also a cesspool. Sorry, New Jerseyans, but your state sucks. Uh, it's not that bad, but it sucks. Um, <laughs> you like that? I took back the slap and slapped again, but <laughs> I'm a New Yorker. What can I say? They tried to steal stat Statue of Liberty from us, too, and I, I will never forget. Uh, screw you. But, like, really, it's, it's happening now, but that's on a larger scale. So it's, like, state to state, you know, if, like, you're in a metropolitan area, you know. But if you were then to decentralize it, it's just, like, at every level, just minimum wage, it, does, it doesn't make sense. The company should be able to figure out for themselves or the business, the family-owned business, the whatever it is, the person working in their garage, should be able to choose and figure out how much they can afford to pay for a job. If no one's available for that job, guess what? They're going to start offering more. And if still no one's available, they'll offer more. It's as much as they can pay. And if they aren't making enough to be able to pay what the people are willing to work for, then th th their business goes under. You know, it's like it's an immune system. It's almost like, you know, it's like that thing that like you get sick and then the body figures out what to do with it without needing something injected into you. You know, it's it's its own immune system. It, it will suck at first. See, the thing is, people, I think, are mostly scared because, yes, at first it will be a, a crash of the, the system and the society. Possibly there will be a lot of people that go out of business. You know, uh, and there will be downsides to it on larger scale uh, businesses. But at the same time, people need to take the responsibility back on themselves and stop expecting it of governance. They should be on ourselves. When Amazon exists, we should all say we're not going to use it. No, thank you, sir. We want to go to private, like, you know, family owned businesses, the smaller businesses, the brick and mortar. We want to support what's going to be the best for society. Does it suck? Is it a little bit less convenient? Yes. But the people just don't. That's the problem.
It's that the people don't have, it's not culturally in us anymore. It's been taken out of us cultural wise, you know, from schools and everything that we don't want the responsibility on our own shoulders, on our own two feet. We don't want to figure out something and make a choice for ourselves as a group and say, we want to support what's best for us. We want McDonald's. We want the fast paced, packaged, you know, homogenous, you know, like poison. That's what that's what society wants. That's a zeitgeist of the mass majority of people, you know, and that's where the thing that's where the problem comes because people don't understand what free market capitalism is anymore. They think right now, I guarantee you, if you probably go around the country and you go up to random people and you say, are we a capitalist country? Like is our business methods and everything being done capitalist? They'll say yes, when it's not at all. We have growing monopolies, growing centralization, growing destruction of the small businesses across the entire country. We've ruined our, our um, manufacturing businesses. We've ruined all of our really exports. We have like so few now, you know, we've ruined everything. We are not capitalists at all. We're a centralization, monarchy, communist kind of system or socialist. But most people wouldn't tell you. And that's where the problem comes in. Capitalism works. It's just you got to be able to tell people what the heck it is first. Well, I think even even if people did want to support their local family-owned businesses and stuff like that, I think the government itself makes that nearly impossible because of the lobbying by the bigger corporations. They price everything out. They make sure that regulations they, regulations. How hard is it to start your own business now? It, it like an actual brick and mortar shop. It's ridiculous for someone starting out. Like, there, if you have no money, good luck trying to get a loan to start a brick and mortar shop where you can order all your supplies and you have everything you need. And even then, they've made it to where, it, and I mean, you're right, we are addicted to convenience. But I think mm -hmm. people have started to wake up and realize this convenience. Also comes with like the McDonald's food, like it's absolute pure garbage, and people are starting to see that more and more. I just think it's too late. Like there's, as far as uh, Civil War things, I think there should be there should have been a revolution a long time ago, in my opinion. And I think it's going to be way worse now whenever it finally does come because there's going to be so many things that are stripped away from people who want that independence, more self-governance, more of the cavalier attitude to where I'll take care of me and mine and help. And it, it just doesn't pay for the general population to strike out on their own anymore because it, it is so hard and nobody wants to deal a lot of it is not wanting to deal with the the hard the literal labor that comes with it like yeah if people started raising their own food hunting again they would save a ridiculous amount of money but then look at how many people don't have the land mass like look at how many ranchers you have who cannot just grow a garden in their backyard how many places in america can you not have a gun to even go hunt it's, well, more than half the population lives in cities, so it's, they're yeah. not going out hunting, you know. Yeah. I mean, they hunt even in, in small towns. Uh, small towns will restrict things like gardening, uh, homesteading. Like uh, you can, there, there, are, there are ways to get into it, but yeah, it, like homesteading has uh, a bunch of regulations. If you, unless you like live, I mean, if you live in like any kind of just suburban type neighborhood, it's. Uh, like you can do gardens, like where I live, we we can do gardens and we can have like up to four chickens, and then there's all these regulations on how we manage all of that. But like that's like the max, you know. It's I don't uh, I'm not gonna speak too much more on it because I haven't looked that much into the regulations. Uh, I just know that I, I've I've looked at them and it's it's lengthy and it's uh, there's there's all these little caveats that you have to account for. Um, and it just, it shouldn't be that way. It really just shouldn't. <laughs> well, I mean, you proved it yourself right there. Like, you don't have to say what the regulations actually are because you already know regulations exist. 
And the fact that they exist in any way, shape, or form to be like, you you know, there's a certain amount of this thing you can do. It's like, look, I mean, I can understand, like, all right, maybe your next-door neighbor is living feet away from you. Uh, like, living 100 feet away from you. Maybe don't get 200 chickens because it could be a, a, a health issue for that person living next to you. You know? But at the same time, I mean, we do have a legal system, and that person can just sue you and be like, look, you're causing health issues. You don't need a exactly. regulation for that. Like, that doesn't need regulation. It's just a matter of, like, yeah, would it suck if your next-door neighbor is, like, you know, decides they're going to build a big, gigantic metal building and, and have 200 chickens in there, and they're venting out all of this poison pretty much into the air, and, like, you're living right next to that vent? Like, yeah, but then you sue them. And it would then also force neighbors to be, oh, guess what, neighborly to each other. You know? It's like, remember that thing, caring about your neighbor and caring about your community and your, your town and working together to figure out what works best and letting the whole system kind of create its own immune system to people doing bad things on its own? Is We just don't do that anymore. And it's just such a happy, a happy centralization. And it's happening to uh, everything. I mean, it's like something I was talking with, uh, you know, Chrissy Frank and everybody last night. I was saying, I don't, I, I have concerns about everyone and how they look at Elon Musk. I have great and grave concerns about it because all people are doing is replacing a, a former monarch with a new monarch. The guy's going to have control over your transportation with cars. I mean, even his coding of the Tesla is uh, being utilized in other cars now of other companies. You know, uh, he also has control of space travel. And people say, oh, yeah, but there's also that blue thing with Amazon. OK, so you have two options and you think that that's a win? Like he has one of the two. That's a monopoly in my book. There's no real competition between two companies. You know, that's not real competition. Real competition is like, hey, there's 50 options and growing. And there's new engineers coming up with companies and utilizing the open source technology out there. You know, that's, that's you know, you know, freedom. Then on top of that, he's creating the main technology that's going to be used to connect to your brain and interface with your brain. So he's going to he's going to have the financial control over whether or not you can walk, you can hear, you could, you know, do many things, maybe even sight. If there's a connection to add like a camera and, you know, we'll connect into it, maybe through Bluetooth, I, I heard was being mentioned or something. They've already got uh, that. As far yeah, as well, no, they have there have been some companies that have done it, but then they uh, go under because they're not making enough money and all the corruption that's happening. And then you have a person who has this connected thing to their brain that is not getting software updates anymore. You know what I'm saying? Uh, pretty messed up. Uh, I was there's a documentary uh, that came out of England about that. Actually, it's messed up. So he's going to have he's having the, uh, you know, the connection to your brain and he's in control of that. And then now he has the control of the public commons. And with that, the sheer amount of things he can do with AI and also figuring out the course of humanity, what he would need to use other, com other companies, it's data. He just got a hold of a massive trove of data. For someone like him that... I don't, I truly do not think he's as altruistic as people want to make it out. He's about creating the setup so he can have the most power. When he has the ability to shut off your car from anywhere, when he has the ability to control what's interfacing with your brain, he has the ability to control the future of humanity with space. You know? And now he has control of the public commons. You know, and everyone's so happy about it because he says things people likes. And, oh, it seems like he's doing a good thing. Today's happy positive might be tomorrow's nightmare. And when I look at everything he will be capable of across those multiple companies, it is very scary and very concerning. Because but... it is just creating a monarch. 
my my only pushback against that will be is uh, y you assume that the government would do anything better. <laughs> like I'm not I'm not saying there's a, there's choose a, there's government. I I never yeah. said choose government over him. I'm just saying that I find him and his existence and everything that is unfolding with him very concerning, and I find it very concerning people's uh, opinions, viewpoints, and the way they act towards him. You know, there's like, I mean, over the last few weeks, I mean, how many tweets are you seeing like, oh, Elon, could you please, oh, please, Elon, oh, Elon, you know, I need to with this, oh, Elon, Elon, this, that. This isn't like... Look, this is how a company should be run. That's all we want. Do it. It's no. People are looking to him as this, I don't want to say like a messiah, but they're looking at him with the same uh, adoration that some would look at a monarch. And it is very concerning. And people aren't really, I, I truly do not believe really people are realizing how powerful he's going to be. I mean, driverless cars are coming from him. From him. You know? This isn't really coming from any other company. They've been trying, but he has the most developed version of the driverless car system. Him. Well, now, uh... when he has that done, he's going to have trucks, cars, vehicles of all types. He's going to be able to offset the entire transportation industry. The whole well, thing. time before your freight becomes... It's uh, becomes a part of the equation as well. When freight, when when they're able, when somebody is able to control the supply lines to yeah. everything, uh, and I think flagrant, I think what Filthy is getting at is that the the consolidation of power in a corporate entity can be just as dangerous as any government. Uh, it could be more dangerous because I mean, they don't. Yeah, answer, that's, you say, like, know. yeah. Well, the and there have been examples of that uh, in the past. Uh, what was the name Rockefellers, of Rockefellers? The Rockefellers, yeah. You know? Right, like the whole reason why, or at least what they said was the justification for for passing like, the Antitrust Act was because the the railroad companies own didn't just own that, but they owned like everything, you yeah. know. And it, uh, and in that regard, I do think that it's, it's there's I can see a necessity for finding a way to break that up because you, you just, whether government or corporate entity, you can't be ha having that much control in so few hands. It's, it's just unhealthy for society. Yeah, I mean, I But society it. does <laughs> need to go into it with skepticism. You know, you look at the Elon situation, they're not really going into the Elon thing with skepticism. I mean, yeah, some people have said like, oh, Elon, like, I hope you don't like, you know, let us down or you know, that they don't fully believe in, in what he's, like, saying or pushing. And, you know, there have been some people. But really, at the end of the day, it, it's, it's so few and far between. And people have this natural kind of, like, knee-jerk reaction to, to have the, yeah, well, but. You know, it's like, no, no ifs, ands, or buts. Like, you have to at least take into account the sheer amount of power one person is accruing across of our future industries such as space, our future industries such as, you know, driverless cars. I mean, there's hundreds of thousands of people in the U.S. that are truckers and other forms of transportation, plus like uh, uh, crash that freight, you know, you talk about the trains that, you know, there's some trains it takes like 20 minutes for it to even drive by because there's so many train cars on it transporting so much stuff across the country. You know, eventually he's going to have these driverless trucks and they're going to work 24-7 without needing a driver and you're going to offset hundreds of thousands of jobs just from that alone. Where are those people going to work? They don't know how to fix those trucks, I can guarantee you that. It's going to be some, like, person with, like, a comp TIA, A+, plus, N+, plus, and this plus type of certification doing that work on that vehicle. And then maybe a mechanic for, like, the engine, kind of. But you're going to have some tech guy doing it. It's not going to be I that mean, not when it's, when it's, uh, when it's electrical, when, it, when, it, when, they're all, when they all become electrical vehicles, uh, even the mechanics are, are going to well, lose work. They, my, yeah. My point yeah, is like I mean we'll go more towards electricians and instrumentation uh, technician types. Yeah. 
You know, I mean, because it'll be easier for them to kind of transfer into that position because they're not having to learn too much new stuff. They already know the general ideas of how an electric engine works, how the current, you know, you need certain currents and converters and, you know, this and that. You know, they just, the one thing they might not fully know about is like wheelbase and, you know, axles and stuff like that. That's where maybe mechanics can help somewhat, you know, but yeah, the majority of that vehicle from above the wheelbase is going to be all, you know, either electrician or a tech person, you know? So it's like all these industries that exist now that are like foundations, such as trucking and mechanics and everything. It's just, you're, you're talking, once you add in mechanics, you're talking millions, millions of people, you know? And he's the only one really who has this at least far enough in its journey. He will be first actor awarded with power in this and everyone's just like ah oh, but you know he's doing good like i understand there's worries but you know he's doing good at least we've got freedom on twitter so now we can fight back it's like you had parlor you have truth social you have other options you just don't make it great you don't you don't take the hardships you don't take the hit to use something and build it up now granted i don't think parlor and truth are that amazing but then again, you have Mastodon, you have, there's options. You also have freaking people in your life. You know, shouldn't that be enough? Telling the people in your life, how many people do you know? It's like, you know, four people, five people, 20 people, how many people do you know? And contact them all and be like, look, I'm getting off of these things. This is why. If you want to come with me, let's, you know, let's go back to the olden days, have some coffee and cake on the weekends, have some conversations and go back to how life used to be where it didn't have to be on some dang screen all the time, and it was face-to-face. -face. But people don't want to take the hard road, and that's why we will continuously centralize. Because when you want to have ease of use and ease of comfort, you always will centralize. Now, granted, things can be done very well in the decentralized way. It can be. Over time, it would probably become way better, even. But we've been addicted to the crack cocaine of centralization and ease of living for so long you don't just hop off of the crack cocaine like that you gotta wean off of the crack weeks months and then it is a constant struggle after that it's addiction yeah i mean i i i agree i, I agree with that i've talked about that but i mean temple he, he's right like we live under the whims of billionaires and you say it's elon but if it's not Elon, it's going to be Bezos. If it's not Bezos, it's going to be Soros. There's always going to be someone. And yeah, Elon's got his fingers in a lot of pies, but someone is eventually going to get there anyway. It's not about, it's not so much about, oh, this is coming. We have to do something about it. It's, this is coming. How do we fortify ourselves against it? And yes. You got to get off the crack. Putting all your faith in the you world. Start so there, yeah. You start there. You can't, yeah, you should absolutely have a healthy skepticism because Elon's proven that he does things on a whim, just like the fact that he won't let Alex Jones back on Twitter. Alex did not break any terms of service other than harassing Oliver Darcy, which is not against terms of service. Elon used the Well, fact no, he's that, not letting him back on just because of the children. Yeah, and that's what I'm that's saying. That's like, one he, thing in and of itself has no foundation of facts. Yeah, he's mentioned it a few yeah, times. It's, it was, it's, it's off platform, you know. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm saying. It's, it's exactly what the left did when they were in control of Twitter. It's like proven they, he does think he's, that's a decision he's made on his whim, and he should be criticized for it. So, And I think people who are paying attention to, aren't just like marching in lockstep, lockstep. I think a lot of people are, but those are your normies who also don't pay attention to what's actually going on in the in the political landscape like your NPCs like your your cultists who were all against the military industrial complex 15 20 years ago but now they're like oh yeah we got to send billions to Ukraine because they, they they're doing the good thing and Putin's evil and it's all his fault and they believe gas prices are high because of Vladimir Putin when the US has the biggest oil reserves of any other country on the planet and so but i mean yeah you should absolutely criticize elon you should pay attention you shouldn't just fall fall for that trap but it's going to happen the big thing is how are people going to get to a point to where 
when this technology and stuff comes, how are how are we going to be fortified against it from being used against us? And me, the black pill that I am, I don't think it, I don't think there's any avoiding it. Social credit systems coming, the CBDCs are coming, the government. If people think that the government absolutely will not have a a switch where they can turn off your car whenever it gets to that point, like people are living in a fantasy world because that kind of power, people are going to want it. And unless there's an absolute EMP that just completely decimates all of the, the digital world as we know it, the, the more technology evolves, the more restrictions we're going to have. But we also have to encourage people to make their own versions. Kind of like the homesteading thing. Like, you want to be able to provide your own food if shit goes bad. Well, on the digital front, I think people need to start, I think coding and writing software, I think that needs to be a central part of education growing up for people because people need to be able to protect themselves from uh, certain aspects of digital oppression like having your car turned off having your uh bank account locked up to where you can't spend money on anything because you said a naughty word like it but i don't think putting all the onus on elon is is necessarily the answer absolutely be skeptical of him but don't assume like he is but yet again i'm that's not what i'm saying i'm not putting it all on elon you're not you're not grasping i'm just saying that is a very concerning thing it's yeah, very think, concerning but, what he's I, doing. Yeah, I, I think what we're, yeah, I think the well, I think the concerning thing is just the lack of concern from yeah. people who are not paying attention. And oh yeah, I, yeah, I think yeah, it's still yeah. far too many people, uh, and they're the ones who end up funding these billionaires because they're just, it, like Guilty said, addicted to convenience. Uh, they they like what Bezos can provide for them with just yeah, a drone delivering something to them the next day or day of delivery, whatever the heck they want even get your food delivered that way in some places now and it, you know it's only a matter of time before it reaches your neighborhood um and i think at a certain right, point, i hate to, i hate to ruin the flow but like i gotta admit that that the the, the hangover is getting to me just a bit <laughs> and, and i feel like I'm, all good. I'm, i might be reaching kind of my limit <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. So I we can call it there. I think we really covered everything anyway on on that. I mean, yeah. so anyone that watching really at good. this point, please click like, leave a comment. What your thoughts on this stuff is? Because I I think that was a really uh a fascinating conversation, and I, I appreciate uh, flagrant at least being able to show the nuance in other directions on it, especially as well. Uh, but I really hope everyone joined the conversation with us, uh, down below in the comments, uh, leave a like, and I'll let Flagrant do the outro after that. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know. That's one of the reasons I like the show though, because we're not just all an echo chamber. Like we all have our own opinions and we all look at things from different perspectives and Hey, we aren't like the left and, or the extreme right and want to murder each other or not talk to each other after just because we have a disagreement, which ladies and gentlemen, that is something you need to start incorporating more in your lives, have disagreements with people and still go out for coffee with them after and realize that we all have a lot more in common than we have separate and in indifference to each other. Um, anyway, uh, I am flagrant triggers again. If you want that Make Marvel Milligan shirt, go to flagranttriggers.com. It is under X-Ray Girls collection page. It is a pre-order, so December 31st, we after that date, you will not be able to get it anymore. And we'll start processing and sending all that stuff out for everyone. Uh, Crash, where can people find you? Find me on Twitter, CrashMondoJR. That's, that's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> I will put together a link tree with some of my other older links that I'm not really doing anything on eventually, but yeah. well, you got to make a minds account, man. I, I do have a minds account. Well, actually, so I'd still have it. I've never posted on it. Go ahead and find me on minds. Follow me. Maybe if I get enough followers, maybe I'll actually pay attention to it. <laughs> yes. Make him make crash minds again, people. <laughs> yeah. Make him have to delve back into the world of social media and be active on it. <laughs> well, he's active on Twitter from time to time. I'm pretty active that's on Twitter, true. but that's the only that's thing that I'm active on. 
I have like I have both of you set to my uh, bell notification thing for Twitter. So anytime you make a post, I just I could watch it. Uh, because, like, on Twitter in your notification section, it will just group together all the people you have the bell notification for. Mm-hmm. So it's almost like scrolling through Twitter, but it's the Twitter you're choosing to see. So it makes it easier for me to see all the posts for all the creators I like and all the people in the community that I like and everything. You mean, like, people have an option on what they want to see and not see? Yeah. And, they and you know what's amazing? Stuff? Guess what? It existed even before Elon Daddy Musk is, existed on Twitter. Uh. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but I was saying that, find me also on Twitter, uh, Fealty Thoughts. Find me on a lot of things that uh, Instagram, Fealty Thoughts. And I have a link tree actually below, unlike Crash, you know, where you can find all my links. And I'll try and keep it as updated as possible. And I am Flagrant Triggers. You can find me at Flagrant Trigger on Twitter because Flagrant Triggers wasn't available. But everything else is flagrant triggers. Uh, YouTube, Rumble, Facebook. Uh, so, yeah, guys, thanks for joining us. Leave your comments below. Hit the like button. Hit the plusy button if I get this up on Rumble this time and stop being a, a lazy, lazy. Um, we'll be here again next week. Uh, well, actually, I think ne- next week I, I probably will not do one because it's Christmas and Christmas yeah. is on Sunday and I got the kids and I'm going to be doing some travel. So uh, m- probably won't have a show next week for you guys. But uh, after that, we'll get everything going and back up to normal stuff. So, guys, thanks for thanks for viewing. Thanks for watching. Leave your comments. Let us know what you think so we can interact with you guys some more. And have a good Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year.